Hi, in this video I will talk about the parties, the Asab Surah. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful. O oh, you prophet, you shall reverence God and do not obey the disbelievers and the hypocrites. God is omniscient, most wise. Follow what is revealed to you from your Lord. God is fully cognizant of everything you do. And put your trust in God. God suffices as an, as, as an advocate. God didn't give any man two hearts in his chest. It's very interesting. So God didn't give any man two hearts in, ch in chest. Nor did he turn your wives, whom you estrange, into your mothers. It means uh, if they call their wife as you are like my mom, which is not true. So, so it is a psychological thing, you know, uh, that you cannot just uh, assume it. You cannot just feel like we are like a brothers and it doesn't make you a brother. Nor did he turn your adopted children into a genetic offspring. offspring. It's the same. All these are mere utterances that you have invented. So people have invented. It is a cultural thing. Maybe they, in the culture, it is the truth. It is a thing. God speaks the truth and goes in the right path. And this is also interesting. God didn't give any man two hearts, two hearts in his chest. You shall give your adopted children names that preserve their relationship to their genetic parents. So, if there is no such thing, uh, child trafficking can increase. And, or people can sell, make a child and sell, make a child and produce a child and sell. It can be a bad thing. So if you don't know much about those things, maybe you think that you, you may not understand why it's a, it's a thing. It shows that because the genetic thing is important. And uh, it, they should know that it is not the same. So for example, it can create a such culture that you took some poor, poor people's children and you raised them and there will be no pregnancy period so it says like a nice thing right in the modern society females do not want to be pregnant and they feel it's a burden and not good for their body in fact it's, this is not always like that but anyway it's out of the topic anyway but if this is in this case maybe they can uh, use this and this is more equitable in the sight of god if you do know their not know their parents then as your brethren in religion, you shall treat them as members of your family. You do not commit a sin if you make a mistake in this respect. You are responsible for your purposeful intentions. God is forgiver, most merciful. So it's a beautiful that. It shows how merciful our God is. If you do not commit a sin if you make a mistake in this respect, you are responsible for your purposeful intentions. God is forgiver, most merciful. The prophet is closer to the believers than they are to each other, and his wives are like mothers to them. The relatives ought to take care of one another in accordance with God's scripture. So this is interesting. So after all of them, God mentioning this. So this is not a thing, but God didn't give, and you cannot just do say your wife that you're like my mom, or you cannot just make your adopted children like your genetic offspring. But this can be a case. The prophet is closer to the disbelievers than they are to each other, and his wives are like are like mothers to them. But it says like mothers to them. The relatives ought to take care of one another in accordance with God's scripture. Thus the believers shall take care of the relatives who immigrate to them, provided they have taken care of their own families first. These are the commandments of this scripture. So this is like uh, his wives. It doesn't say that his wives are mothers to them. It says like it's made, like mothers to them. So it shows that uh, the communication between the believers should be should be tight. It shouldn't be weak. Recall that we took from the co prophets their covenant, including you, Noah, uh, Prophet Muhammad. So this. In this um, in this uh, surah, we we see that uh, it is specifically about Prophet Muhammad, but it, in the in this in the in this this is like a, you know one of the Moses stories of Moses, and 
so that's why uh, I, I think that's why this these sentences make this uh, surah universal so there are examples for us in recall that we took the prophets their covenant including you Noah, Abraham Moses and Jesus the son of Mary we took from them a solemn pledge subsequently he will surely question the truthful about their truthfulness and has prepared for the disbelievers a painful retribution oh you will believe remember God's blessing upon you when soldiers attacked you we sent upon the them violent wind and invisible soldiers God is seer of everything you do so uh, when soldiers attacked, we got sent a violent wind and invisible soldier. God is seer of everything we do. Um, when they came from above you and from beneath you, your eyes were terrified. Your hearts ran out of patience, and you harbored unbefitting thoughts about God, like, like, can God really help us or something like that. That is when the, the believers were truly tested. They were severely shaking up. The hypocrites and those with doves in their hearts said, What God and his messenger prom promised us was more than a delusion. Illusion, sorry, not a delusion. A group of them said, O oh, people of Yathrib, you cannot attain victory. Go back. Others made up excuses to the prophet. Our homes are vulnerable. When they were not vulnerable, they just wanted to flee. Had the enemy invaded and asked them to join, they would have joined the enemy without hesitation. It's important. So he invaded and asked them to join. They had so that it means they uh, they're not really believe. They had pledged to God in the past. They wouldn't turn around and flee. Making a pledge with God involves a great responsibility. We see we you remember the Jonah, the prophet Yunus, and he um, you you remember that he made a pledge with God. He was uh, spreading God's words. And later, um, later what happened, you know, uh, later um, we, we know that he didn't follow it and God punished the, punished the prophet. And he's a prophet, but God is punishing him more, more. And so it shows that making a pledge with God, like whether you are a prophet or not, so it involves a great responsibility. He didn't carry out his responsibility. And in the Quran, as I remember, he protested God and decided to leave the town. And, you know, he has actually a good relationship with God and he knows, but he ignored it. He, is, he feels like they don't, I think the story is like, this is my interpretation. He, he feels like uh, they don't believe it anyway, so just I, I want to leave. But uh, maybe he felt like God is, it's not what God wants, but he didn't follow it. Say if you flee, you can never flee from that or from being killed. So it's very important. No matter what happens, you only live a short life while longer. Say, who will protect you from God if he willed any adversity or willed any blessing for you? They can never find beside God any other Lord and Master. God is, God is fully aware of the hinderers among you, and those will say to their comrades, Let us all stay behind. behind. Rarely do they mobilize for defense. So they are, in Quran, we see that the, the believers are not aggressive. They're always for uh, defense. Also, there are two stingy, two stingy when dealing with you. If anything threatens the community, you see their eyes rolling with fear, as if that had already come to them. Once the crisis, of all, crisis is over, they whip you with sharp tongues. They're too stingy with their well. These are not believers, and consequently, God has nullified their works. This is easy for their got to do so this is important so during the crisis time once uh, so to choosing the right decision is very important and uh, so they cannot be uh, stingy and they have responsibility of having a lot of stuff a lot of belongings they should do something you should actively support them uh, and if they don't actively support them the unbelievers disbelievers push, will push them to do something anyway and that you know, if the enemy asks them to join, they will join, and they're only afraid of their that, that, that way. 
They thought that the party that parties might come back. In that case, they would wish that they were lost in the desert, asking about your news from afar. Had the parties attacked you while they were with you, they would really support you. The messengers of God have set up a good example for those among you who seek God in the last day and constantly, constantly think about God. So God knows that after 1,400 years, people will read it. So not, at that time, people if they, people read it, or after 100 years, they will not think like, mm, uh, they will not, you know, they will not make feel that this this verses are strange, but these this verse uh, make it universal. It, there's a good example, so God is explaining here. Uh, when the true believers solve the parties, they say, this is what God and his messenger have promised us, and God and his messenger are truthful. This only strengthened their faith and augmented their submission. Among the believers who fulfilled their plans with God, some of them died while others stand ready, never wavering. God will surely recompense the truthful for their fruitfulness and will punish the hypocrites. If he so wills or redeem them, God is forgiver, most merciful. God repels those who displeased with their rage, and they left, left empty-handed. God does spare the believers in fighting. God is powerful, almighty. He also brought down their allies among the people of the scripture from their secure positions and threw terror into their hearts. Some of them you killed and some of you took captive. He made you inherit their land, their homes, their money, and lands you had never stepped on. So it's important, lands you had never stepped on. God is in control of all of the things. O oh, prophet, say to your wives, if you are seeking this life and its humanities, then let me compensate you and allow you to go amicably. But if you are seeking God and his messenger and the board of the hereafter, then God has prepared for the righteous among you a great recompense. O oh, wives of the prophet, if any of you commit a gross sin, the retribution will be doubled for her. This is easy to God, for God to do. Previously I have mentioned this and and we see that um, so this about the verse 15. They had pledged to God in the past. They will not turn around and flee. So making a pledge with God involves a great responsibility. So they are also believers are marrying with them and then they are making pledge too. And this is, on, this is another important thing. So some people say, from another, on the other hand, some people say that uh, we don't have, pe females don't have right to divorce. Okay, that's it, prophet. But even prophet's wife can do this. It says like, if you're seeking this life and it's when it is, it's divorce. So knowing this verse is very important to interpret the rest of the Quran and female related verses. So first of all, this verse shows that, for example, if there is a beating in the Quran, so the moment you beat, they will say, okay, I'm divorced and then it's over. So it means that the beating in the Quran, if there is a beating, or alternatively it's isolating, okay, I, I respect that all the uh, things, but let's assume that it's a beating. And it means if once you point that you beat, and then, so if they don't accept it, and if they, it's like a bloody, then, if, so it cannot be excessive. So it shows that um, they have right to divorce is important factor that explains verses related to female. And Quran is using male-centric language, but mostly males are uh, managing females at that time. They're making money. Um, so, and then, wives of the Prophet, if any of you commits a gross sin, the retribution will be doubled for her. This is easy for God to do. Um, so, we'll grant a double recompense, and we have prepared for, for a generous vision. O oh, wives of the Prophet, you are not the same as any other woman. If you observe righteousness, therefore you shall not speak too softly. Lest those with disease in their hearts may get the wrong ideas. You shall speak only righteousness. So another thing in the Quran, in the, in the uh, lives, you know, some people uh, doing, so, so saying that, so people know what softly talking means. It's like talking attractively. But there is no measurement of it, okay? But how you can you cannot measure it, but people should know it. They should, should feel it. Uh, so that that's why uh, it's something about their wearing to what they wear to their clothes. But you cannot just say that every clothes are acceptable considering crime. You cannot say this just because it was not this crime. But you can say that it's relative. I agree with this. But it says that then uh, 
than making not short is better, then you can you can say that. So, but some people try to say that all oh, this these verses are unclear or God didn't actually describe, and then we we can wear whatever that we want. So people people know it very well. People feel it very well. So she should just uh, accept the verse the way it is. So I I don't agree with forcing females to wear something that they didn't want. But I don't agree with that. The every clause are acceptable because Quran is not telling it clearly. And they say even like Quran could say it clearly. Quran cannot say it clearly too because maybe they will create like a transparent clause. You know, like they will think that it's a trans. It's like a, it's a clause. And if God says that uh, up to the, your hands, just let's assume that I'm, I'm, I'm making assumption. And they can uh, they can you know make a transparent clause that's showing inside or something like that. They can they can be creative about it. So that's why God is saying that this is main message. And I know you feel it. I know it's sort of a cultural thing, but still you should be careful about it, and you should avoid um, avoid committing small sins as well if you are a believer. So this is what God says, and that's what I understand. And you cannot just act like uh, God didn't mean it, and uh, the short is relative, and and actually there's no measurement or something like uh, God didn't. If God if God want God God would tell this. So anyway, that's all I want to say. And uh, anyway, it's not a big scene, but yeah. So it's an advice and recommendation, and do not make it uh, unnecessary. You know, so if if they say like a uh, then. If short is unclear, then it means God said something uh, unnecessary. So then unnecessary. If it is uh, the God is not clear about it, it's not. It's also not good. So such interpretation is not is is, is not a. So, but I cannot just say like uh, they should cover that part of their black or something. But they, you know, yeah, anyway. So it, lengthening the clause is better. That's it. I'm not saying the like super extreme way of wearing clothes, but yeah, that's what I understand. I hope you understand it, and this is all of my interpretation, God knows better. And thanks for watching this video, and hope to see you in the next video.